MTG openings back again for another Commander 2014 deck. This time we're going to look at the Mono Red Built from Scratch deck. Here's the new Clean Zerker, Drati Scrap Savant. And unlike other times, you can actually use him as your commander, as you can see here. So, this is one of the most sought after ones from what I understand. I got one of each one, so. I wanted them all, so I was happy to get them for the price I did, whether this one was the most expensive or not. So, all right. Well, without further ado, I'm gonna crack into this one, and we'll go over the contents for everybody. If you go to a local game store, you might find this one to actually be the most expensive out of them all, if they aren't all priced the same because of some of the other cards in it, which I will probably point out as we go through. Just like all the others, you get a oversized version of, an oversized foil version of the new Planeswalker, which, I mean, I guess you can use it if you get your commander in play. I'm not so sure the point of these. I guess it adds to the packaging, so they keep doing it. The back is almost like a magic card. You'll notice it's missing. At least the deck masters and the colors are a little different as well, obviously. So, put that up there. So inside the box here, you get your belt from scratch on the side. Here's the box, just like the other one, just like previous editions. You get the cards with the emblems and tokens. You get a deck insert going over some stuff about the deck and a rules reference card, which if you're a tournament organizer, you might recognize those more than some other people. So I'll just put those in there. Okay, well without further ado, we'll dig right in here. So as I said, these are monocolored EDH decks, so it's the first time they've done that, which is kind of fun. So, one of the reasons why I made sure to get them all, because I actually have many different EDH decks that involve all the colors. I only have one monocolored one. It's blue, actually. So, first we're going to go over the tokens here. So, they're double-sided. It's the first time Wizards of the Coast included tokens in these Commander products, so that's kind of cool. And it helps. They can print more by making them double-sided. So here's the emblem for Drowti. On the back is the Tuk Tuk the Returned, which... I don't think it makes any sense that he's on the back because you could technically have both of those in play at once. I get some of these other ones because they, you know, two goblins and a bunch of mirrors, but what happens if you have the emblem and Tuk Tuk? Well, I suppose problems for another day. So you get one, two, three, four mirror tokens, and on the back you have Pentavites. Obviously, Pentavis is going to be in this deck. And then you get two goblins with goats on the back. Zero one goat tokens, that's interesting. And then you get, oh here's another mirror with a pentolite. Then you get the death touch worm, three three, and the life link worm, three three, with two more goats on the back. So these are for the worm coil engine, which is in the deck, so. Put those there, all right. So, as with all the others, you're gonna get a bunch of land for the color. So here are all our mountains. Nothing too exciting there. I do like the pictures they picked. So I did not expect the Arcane Lighthouse to be in that slot, but that's okay. So first is an Arcane Lighthouse. So it's great for those people who love Hexproof and or Shroud creatures, especially if it's their commander. Next is the Planeswalker, Draw T. Scrap Savant. People are trying to use him in Legacy. Uh, as of recording this video, next weekend is Grand Prix New Jersey, so we'll see if he makes an appearance. I wouldn't hold your breath, but he definitely will be in EDH decks all over the place. The alternate, new alternate commander is Felden, so if you played Magic for a long time, you might remember things like things like Felden's Cane. So, this guy is very powerful, I think. Maybe not as a general, but in many different kinds of decks, because he puts a token on the battlefield of a creature in a graveyard, but it doesn't exile that creature. So lots of reoccurring shenanigans you can do. And then the other alternate commander that they reprinted is Bosch, Iron Golem. So for those of you who don't know, because Bosch is an artifact, he has a red activation, which means he's a red commander. So you can use him as your commander if you want as well. I may play test these a few times before I take them apart just to mess around with them and see how they are and talk to people about them so I may have to try Bosch as the commander at one point. So you get a Goblin Welder, one of the many semi-money cards in this 
deck. People actually consider him at one point at least to be one of the best one drops in the game. There's Tuk Tuk, the Explorer. Here's one of the new cards, Dual Caster Mage. So this may also see play in Legacy, we will find out. So it's three to cast, two to flash. When Dual Caster Mage enters the battlefield, copy target instant or sorcery spell, and you may choose new targets for that copy. So that's pretty good. Most creatures with flash are at least shouldn't be ignored. Horde Smelter Dragon, Warmonger Hellkite. He's one of the new cards. He has all attacking creatures plus one plus zero, and all creatures attack each combat of evil. Five five flyer. This is the Tyrant's Familiar. So this is the red creature with Lieutenant. So Lieutenant is when the creatures in play. It has a bonus if your commander's in play. So this one is a 5-5 five, five flying haste for 7. And if you have your commander, he gets plus 2, plus 2 on whenever he attacks it, a 7 damage target creature defending player controls. So, pretty powerful. If you can get to 7 mana, which in commander or EDH is not hard to do. Bogart and Hellkite. Everyone likes their dragons. Bitter Feud is one of the new cards. Impact Resonance. Also new. Chaos Warp is a reprint of one of the old new cards. Um, it's good removal for red for things like enchantments, which they don't really have. Volcanic Offering is also new. Word of Seizing. Magma Quake. Star Storm. Scrap Mastery. So this is one of the new cards. If you're familiar with Living Death, this is an artifact version of that. So that's pretty fun if you're building an artifact deck like this is. Incite Rebellion. Blasphemic is Act, a red board sweeper, if you under the right circumstances. Hypocrisite, printed as rare. It was originally uncommon. Or it was originally rare, then they reprinted it as uncommon in uh, Modern Masters. And now it's back with a rare symbol, which is perfectly fine. Junk Diver, Solemn Simulacrum with the awesome picture. Don't get me wrong, I like the player selected pictures, the player version as well, but that picture is so awesome. Steel Hellkite. Up next is Worm Coil Engine. Now, this is a welcome site for a bunch of people, because if you didn't play during Scars, Worm Coil Engines are, were at least $20 or more. I have a pre-release one because I played then, but not everyone can get one. So a welcome addition in the Commander lineup this time. So there it is. Pretty amazing 6-6. Six, six. Mirror Battle Sphere for all your mirror tokens. There's Pentavis. Speaking of tokens. So here's the ruby medallion, so every color got their medallion, which makes their spells cost one colorless less. They were only made in one set previously, so you could, they were sometimes hard to get your hands on if you weren't willing to just buy the single, so they're a nice addition to these decks as well. They also have new art, which is pretty cool. There's Jalum Tome, Trading Post, Cage Sun, Spine of Isha, Interesting way for removal. Flamekin Village is a new land. As it enters the battlefield, you may reveal an element elemental card from your hand. If you don't, it comes into play tapped. It taps for one red, and you can pay a red and tap it to give target creature haste until on the turn. Which is kind of cool. Buried Ruin to get back some of your artifacts. Dark Steel Citadel to fuel some of your artifacts. Dormant Volcano. Forgotten Caves is one of the red cycle lands. Ghost Quarter, Great Furnace, that's the red artifact land. Phyrexia's Core, Reliquary Tower, I'm surprised this isn't in more of these commander decks. Just seems like a card that goes in a lot of people's decks. Smoldering Crater is the other red cycle land. Temple of the False God, now we're past the rares. Here's the Flame Tongue Kava with new art. I love this card, it's in pretty much every red deck I have that isn't standard. Beetleback Chief, Ignit Chewer, Spite Bellows, Faithless Looting, Whip Flare, Mirror Retriever, 
Mere Sire, Bottle Gnomes, Cathodian, Palladium Mirror, Pilgrim's Eye, Ever Flowing Chalice, Panic Spell Bomb, there's the Soul Ring, every one of them gets everyone gets one this time. Wayfarer's Bubble. There's the Fire Diamond, so the diamond cycle was made with new artwork. And there's the red one. Icor Wellspring, Liquid Metal Coating, Mind Stone, Megasynth Wellspring, Swift Foot Boots. Command Sphere is new for all these decks. It's a three cast. Tap it to add one man of any color of your commander's color identity to your mana pool. You can also sacrifice it any time to draw a card, which is nice. Pristine Talisman, Unstable Obelisk is nice. It's acceleration and it also is removal once you are set on your mana for a game. Dreamstone Hedron and Lower Seeker's Stone, also a new card. So that's the red deck. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll probably play test it just to see how if it, how much fun it is before I cannibalize it for my other decks. So, hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the other Commander 2014 products along with my other product openings. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, see ya.